This is Ashton Marcus with KUCI 88.9 FM, and online I have... Jonathan Infante. Okay, and you are? Uh, I am the producer and director of Into the Woods, playing at the Bray Curtis Theater. Uh, Great. Uh, Could you tell us a little something about yourself? Sure. Uh, I got started in this business about 20 years ago, uh, coming out of high school as an actor. Um, Moved behind the scenes and became a director of theater, directed my first um, play outside of the educational realm when I was 19 at Stages Theater in Fullerton. Um, After that, decided to go to film school. Worked in Hollywood on independent films, national commercials, um, and some television shows for a while. Then left and did some national tours on musically. Was out on tour with the Jonas Brothers, Miley Cyrus. Um, Then decided that I wanted to go back to theater. Um, Set up back in Orange County. And since then, I've been working in with most of the theaters um, in the area. I'm also a designer. I work for Musical Theater West, McCoy Rigby, um, 3D Theatricals, and I also work for the Disneyland Resort as a video content creator. So uh, how did the show go? The show is going marvelously. We're getting great um, audience reactions from what they're seeing. Is We're selling well. Um, People are coming out. I think a lot of people were seeing have, who have just recently seen the movie were interested to see what the stage version was going to do, and that's what we provided with them. That's what we provided for them was more of the full stage experience with a twist. What do you look for when you uh, do your casting? Um, I look for someone that is definitely qualified to play the role. Um, they have to be able to sing it. They have to be able to act, and they have to be of a personality type that I want to work with. Um, this is the inaugural production for Southgate Productions, but it's not our first creative venture. Um, we've, as a team, have created other shows that we put together, but this is our first show that we're doing that we actually took a full book musical and produced uh, the last two or three shows we wrote ourselves. And um, so what I'm looking for is, is talent, look, um, and people that are fun, that we, we think we can spend a couple weeks with because it gets really intense. And uh, we do it at a professional pace. We don't have a long rehearsal process. So we just, we're just we looking for people that have a resume that has proven they've done some shows. And, you know, we'll take some risks here and there. But I managed to assemble a solid cast of, you know, 20 people out of an audition process that was almost 200 people. And I think we got the best of the best. Yes. Uh, I do a lot of community theater. Uh, I cover about eighty percent of the of of the theater with the bottom eighty percent, and mm-hmm. I noticed you've taken a lot of community theater actors. So you've actually you've actually didn't just go to these people who are professionals who are just looking for work. You actually went to the community theater people. Uh, d- did you do that on purpose? Well, we're we're a spe- we're calling ourselves a special breed of community theater. We we deal with everything we can on on the regional professional level, but we don't have equity contracts. So as much as I work inside of the equity realm um, as a designer and as a professional, and I work with a lot of professional actors, you know, who are equity, I also work with a lot of people that, you know, still perform in the community, but are striving to reach that next level. Um, We try to stipend, and we do. We did stipend all of our performers on this performance just because, you know, it gets hard to do this in the semi-professional realm um, when you're not making any money for it. So um, I did. I looked inside of, you know, the top talented North Orange County performing artists, and uh, I found a lot of them. Luckily, a lot of them I know personally and have done projects with. And so when we announced that we were doing a full book musical, you know, we had we had a lot of people come out. Excellent. Okay, seeing as Into the Woods the movie has just come out, did that affect any of your decisions at all in what you're doing? Well, yeah. I mean, we 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 had been planning to do the show, um, knowing that the movie was going to come out. And from early on, we knew that the script and the story was going to get changed and adapted to be a film. And we knew that there was going to be a demand to kind of see Into the Woods as a whole, with all of its music still in place. And so it did. It changed, it changed all the way. I looked at a, a couple of things. I, I looked at the princes differently and really... I've always known that they would be the comedic relief for the show, but the way that Disney pushed it so hard and over the top really led me down a certain path of how I was going to take my princes down. Um, it also made me see things that, 
you know, I still loved about doing it theatrically rather than doing it in film. And we're kind of a bridge. We into the woods that ne- definitely doesn't ever have as much video as I've put into the show. Um, but being a video designer, I I felt that it would it would complement it beautifully and give it more of a live live action feel. Um, but just imagery, um, color and lighting. I mean, the film was gorgeous, but unfortunately, it just wasn't the whole. It wasn't the whole show. If some of my viewers decide to go to see your play, what can they expect to see? I think they can expect to see Into the Woods with a twist. Um, I set it in a very modern setting to start and to end. It, it opens in a, in a very modern library. And that's kind of my throw to that this is, at its base, it's, it, these stories have already existed. Um, Sondheim um, weaved Into the Woods so well that you know, you often forget that these these stories already existed. So they should expect to see um, and hear beautiful voices, um, strong sets, a strong just overall performance. Um, I think they'll leave remembering these stories as they were told, and they'll they should leave with some sense of you know thinking about what the messages of this show are, which is you know it talks a lot about family and relationships between, you know, father and son, mother and daughter, um, and also about just, you know, growing up and being out there alone, searching for what you're trying to find. So I think they can expect a great night of theater, a lot of great voices, and a small twist that's going to leave them, or let them leave the theater thinking a little bit more. I always go to see the shows myself and uh, to get the cast. One of the reasons I do it is because I can get everyone, I can actually talk to everyone, and and also because I enjoy theater a lot. Sure. But I couldn't get to you. You were very busy. Is this normal? I mean, what happened? <laughs> this is fairly normal. I, I wear a, I wear a lot of hats. I work, um, you know, a hundred percent of my money, and the way I live my life is made in the entertainment industry, from directing, and producing my own shows to working for with all of the regional theaters in North Orange County um, to working for the Disneyland Resort. Um, I'm kind of dragged all over the place and so i i had to miss my opening sunday um for personal and business reasons and you know i have i'm going out on two tours later on this year that i'm already producing and designing for um but i also have a an onslaught of shows that are coming up so it, it, it never really slows down it's really hard to find a time frame where i can take amount of time away and just get to produce and direct my own stuff because I really do. I make my, I make my living doing theater. I'm blessed to do that. It's really, really hard to do, but that means that schedules overlap and as much as I can plan, you know, um, things, things get hectic. So we opened the exact same night as 3d theatricals to school and 3d and I are really good friends are one of my biggest clients and I'm great friends with um, all the Dawson's, but you know, we, had to produce um, all of their marketing material for opening weekend at the same time as opening my own show. So it just got a little hectic. Ah, so it's almost like missing your very first baby because this is like your first baby, right? <laughs> yeah, I've opened a lot of shows, but this uh, this one is truly special because I am the essentially the lone producer producer in partnership with the Curtis. But, you know, um, being the producer and the director, all decisions did fall on me. I have an amazing staff, I have amazing creative staff, and I had a lot of support. But leaving, you know, anytime during opening weekend is is, is tough. So uh, I missed them all on Sunday. Um, sad I missed you in the lobby, but, you know, I also had uh, a good amount of people come to the show, you know, to support me, and I and I wasn't there to see them either. But, you know, it's just kind of, kind of the trade-off of the business right now, you know, in order to keep doing what we're doing. Well, don't worry about it. At least I got you. So... <laughs> So thanks for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Of course. I'm Ashton Marcus with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and you are? I am Candice Berg, and I play the witch. I was born and raised here in Southern California, and I uh, graduated from 2008 uh, from Circle and Square Theater Conservatory in New York City, and uh, then I came home, and now I am trying to do theater in L.A. and just working my way up the chain, hopefully Broadway's one day. Can you also give me a synopsis of your character? Sure. Uh, the witch lives next door to the baker and the baker's wife, and she needs uh, the baker and the baker's wife to do her a big favor, and that favor is she needs a cow 
cow is white as milk, a cape is red as blood, uh, hair is yellow as corn, and slippers pure as gold. And she's going to make a concoction out of these things. And uh, they have three days to find these items. And if they do, uh, she will grant them their wish, which is to have a baby. So the entire show is about her trying to basically get her wish and then give them their wish as well. So how do you tackle a role like this that was made famous by Bernadette? What do you do? Well, first you try to do your own work and you uh, don't play Bernadette Peters because Bernadette Peters is just too wonderful and she is her own woman. So uh, you just look at what the character's needs and wants are and from there you just follow uh, what the most important things are to your character and it just create you create your own character by doing that. So yeah, that's that's basically how you. I think everybody tackles their role, in my opinion. <laughs> So how do you think it, uh, the performance turned out? Uh, today I think it went really, really well. Uh, this this uh, cast came together and we had 12 rehearsals and then a few days of tech and we put the show up. And it is almost a three-hour show. So it was uh, it, it was a huge undertaking, but we are all big Into the Woods fans and big Sondheim fans specifically. And Sondheim writes for the actor. He doesn't necessarily write for the singer because he, he wants people who are going to be able to go there emotionally. And so uh, I feel that I'm very blessed to be in th- within this group of people because uh, these are actors first, and they want to tell the story. And that's the most important thing, I think. That's why people go to theater. They want to hear the story. So uh, today, I think we all came together, and we told a really great story, and I was really proud of this cast today. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ashton Marcos, KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and you are? Uh, Stephen Biggs. And you play? I play in this part the narrator and mysterious man. And could I have a brief bio of you? Uh, yes, uh, I teach at Fullerton and Chafee Colleges in the theater arts departments. Um, I've done theater, you know, professionally now since 1990. Um, I was a Klingon at Star Trek The Experience out in Las Vegas. Uh, that was probably one of my coolest gigs. And I, uh, I'm also a member of Theater of Note up in Hollywood. So. Could I also have a brief synopsis of your character? <laughs> yes, well, it's two characters, so it's kind of interesting. So the, the narrator is basically kind of leading <clears throat> excuse me, leading the audience through the story. And then uh, occasionally in the story, there's this mysterious man who is also sort of moving people to get you know things done in the story. And everything, and you kind of find out over the course of the story who the mysterious man is in relationship to some of the other characters. I found your character very existentialist. When when he died, the entire the entire play just shifted. What do you think about that? Um, I can I can see that when you say existentialist, what what do you mean by that? I mean basically before everything was concrete. You're like you were a child. You were told what to do. You knew. You had to go to you had to go to school. You had to do your homework. You had to eat your lunch. You had to brush teeth. You had to go to sleep. Afterwards, you could do anything you want. Afterwards, it's up to you. No one knows what's going to happen. Well, a- exactly. And like I say, when you find out who the mysterious man is in relationship to some of the other characters, that makes perfect sense. Um, that that at certain points in your life, there is somebody that's kind of telling you, you know what to do, when, where, but then when that person or those people, you know, leave your, then at a certain point, yeah, you're on your own, except you're not, you know, which is, again, it's one of the, one of the themes of the play. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, seeing as you have so much, uh, so much history in the theater, any advice you can give to younger uh, people who want to get into this? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, don't try to be a star. Try to be the best theater artist you can be. Um, if you do that, if you're doing theater, if you're doing any art form, really, but if you're doing theater, or you know any kind of show business thing because you love to do it because you have to do it you will get work because people respond to people that take their fun seriously and whereas if you're just trying to do it to get famous well don't even you don't have to do anything just you know go and drop your pants in Hollywood and Vine and have somebody make a YouTube video of you you know it doesn't take any talent or anything to, to be famous but it does take a lot of talent and work and skill to actually be a good artist, whether it's in theater, film, television, sculpting, painting, music, whatever it is. And so that's what I do. Take the fun seriously. Yeah. Thank you very much for being on the show. Sure, no problem. Ashton Marcus with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and you are? I'm with Claire Broderick, and I'm playing Jack's mother.
Great. Okay. And could I have a bio of you? Uh, sure. Um, I grew up in Orange County, and I um, grew up doing theater as a, uh, in high school, and also um, I got a degree in theater from UCLA. Um, I, for the last decade, I've been performing with uh, an Irish folk band uh, called the Merry Wives of Windsor. We perform at local venues and the Renaissance Fairs. This is my first musical in um, over a decade. Okay. okay, and could I have a brief synopsis of your character? Sure. Uh, Jack's mother is, um, she's kind of a single mother, but she's not. Her husband, um, the, the, the family is very poor, and her husband has left um, to go try and make money for the family, but he hasn't come back. And she has no life skills, so she's been looking to her son to take care of her and try and um, uh try and and fix what's wrong in her life um, but unfortunately neither of them are really able to make money or to to um to really take care of themselves and so uh, the only option she has is they have this cow which back in that time was very valuable um, so she uh, forces her son to go sell the cow he ends up going up a beanstalk um, a magical beanstalk and finding a, a untold treasure and they end up being richer than they ever could have imagined for a, a character that's unknown how do you make this a, a unique character well one of the things that um, I always try to do when I'm working with any character is bring it back to a real person like no matter how fantastical they are on the outside, on the inside it's still an actual person that's making these choices and doing these things. And um, so I always try and figure out, you know, what what kind of things would have to happen in my life in order for me to make the same choices as this character. Yeah, got it. During the the last scene that you that you were in. Um, what were you thinking about on that one? Because that was actually kind of very important for you. Yeah, no, that was um, without giving it to giving too much away. Um, at that point, um, she, rather than resenting the fact that her son doesn't have the life skills to take care of her, she's realized that she really does love the son that she has, and that she will do anything to protect him. And literally, all I'm thinking is, you know, I've I've got to do anything I can, say say whatever I can, in order to to keep the giant from killing my son. All right, thank you very thank much you for so being much. on the show. Oh, thank you very much. Hi. Nice yeah. to meet you. Yes, I'm Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM at Irvine, and you are? Tyler Campbell. I've been performing since I was six years old, and I've done shows all over Orange County. Uh, most recently, I did, um, oh my, I'm sorry, I did the Shadow Box at uh, the Stage Door Repertory Theater. I've done Assassins, the musical, at uh, Fullerton College, I'm, where I'm currently a student there. I've done plenty of shows there as well. And you play? The Baker. The Baker is somebody who's trying to look for, his, his ultimate wish is to have a child. So he goes into the woods to be able to undo a spell that is put on his family tree in order to be able to have a child. And he goes with his wife, and he's, type of, he's a very moral person, and he doesn't want to take any help from anybody. And so when his wife comes into the woods to help him, he's a very you know, frictioned at first, and then he changes towards the middle of the show and starts to become more accepting and start to really enjoy the love that he has with his wife and realize that he can't do this alone until ultimately in the end he realizes that he is alone and doesn't know what to do and he's never been able to, he's never been alone before in his life. So that was a moment that he really has, and it's great. Yeah. So basically, what kind of uh, emotion did you draw from this character? What, what were you kind of trying to put into it? Um, well, I don't know. I, I mean, I try to always go with as much as honest as possible with every character I, I go into. This one specifically hit, hit home very well. Um, we always, as people, just always feel like we're alone. And anything that happens to us, and anything especially that's damaging or, or hard for us to do, we feel like we're the only ones that go through it. So I pulled a lot from my own life and what has happened to me and the people that I've lost in my life where I felt very emotionally alone and and isolated and it, it's it's hard and it hurts every night but it's it's worth it and beautiful and I have such a brilliant cast behind me to support me and, and I and I feel very welcomed and very comfortable so yeah so how do you think you did uh, I don't know how do you think I did <laughs> I think I did okay I guess my voice is going a little bit it's tired we've been going at this show for a while so uh, just every day of running 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 and running and I'm just a little exhausted but it's brilliant and I love doing it every day so I could do the show every day till I die my voice I don't know if it could take, it could take that but I, I would try <laughs> Were you, for the audience, were you trying to gear it towards children or to parents or towards, towards um, anyone? I think I think this is a show specifically that Sondheim wrote 
uh, to appeal to everyone, children and adults alike, because I think that it has such a playful nature, especially in the beginning, that it, it appeals very well to children and, and to adults, and atta- attaching those same fairy tales that we've heard our entire lives, and then we get older and we realize the morals that were put upon them, and then we start to realize the deeper meaning of the show and about how we realize that not everyone is alone, and we always feel like we're alone, and we always feel like everything that happens to us is our own struggle and our own journey, but we have everyone around us that understands and that can relate to us, and so it's just something that I think that it, it applies to everyone, and everyone can take something from children's or children or adults. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I'm Ashton Marcus with KUCI 88.9 FM, and you are? I'm Chanel Moorhead. I'm a 17-year-old junior at Orange County High School of the Arts, and I've been doing theater my whole life, and this is one of my favorite roles I've ever played. And I just, um, also on the side, I have a birthday party business where I dress up as princesses and go to little kids' parties. And you play? Uh, I play Little Red. Uh, Little Red, uh, she's very different than me because she's very snarky and dry and sarcastic and I'm a very bubbly person in general. And so I like playing her because she, I get to be someone I'm not. And she just she gets to wield a knife, so that's fun. Can you tell me a little bit about the, uh, the high school you go to? Um, well, OSHA is a performing arts high school and we go there basically, the school day is from 8.05 to um, 4.50 in the afternoon. And the first, um, the first half of the day is academics and we have a very strong academic program which is really nice but then from 2.15 to um, 4.50 we get to go and do what we audition to go into the school for such as I'm in musical theater so we have different things we have voice class we have operetta we have some people can take makeup and costume design if they want to and it's just a really great experience and I've been going there for about five years now which is really fun okay so do you consider yourself say an actor who can sing or a musician who can act well, I, I like to do both. I'm, I was primarily a singer when I started out, but I'm starting to get more into the acting side of things, which is really nice. I'm starting to read more plays and go on more auditions for more professional stuff. So you're actually very young, because so you actually are playing a teenager. I've seen some people 20 years old play teenagers. Yeah, it, it's a really great opportunity for me to play this role, because I get to work with all these um, older actors that have had so much experience, and I'm just learning so much from them, and it's very professional, and I just I love being in this atmosphere with everyone. They're just so nice. So how do you prepare yourself? Do you just become yourself, or do you, you try to become a different person? Well, it started out, I was playing it very me, but then we decided we wanted to go in kind of a different direction, and so I kind of just channel, I have, I actually kind of take my inspiration from one of my friends who's very dry like this, so I always just think about her when I'm playing this role. So when you were casted in this thing, were you, uh, were you kind of surprised that you actually got the part? I was very surprised. I kind of came in not expecting a lot. Like I knew, like I knew some people auditioned, which was really fun. I was—it was such a fun audition process, but I didn't really expect to like actually get in, and that was super amazing. So, is this your first real acting position, or in, uh, you know, outside of high school? Um, yes, actually, I've done like community theater production, but this is my first like professional production. Just to put my opinion, I was actually very impressed by your uh, by your role. Thank you so much. That means so much. I I love it. Okay. This is just what I love to do. So. Okay. Do you think that that your your performance actually shifted the uh, play, say, into a better light, or in say closer to a different degree? Well, I think that everyone has done such an amazing job with their roles. We went into such, like, the first three days of our audition process, not audition process, rehearsal process, we just dove into the characters and kind of picked them apart and decided where we wanted to go with them. And I think everyone plays such a very beneficial part. Even, like, the smaller characters, they just, everybody together brings the show to just a whole other level. And I just love working here. What kind of advice can you give to for people who are actually trying to break into it? Because it looks like you're, you may be a little new to it, but... What kind of advice can you give them? Well, don't be afraid to like tear away from what your comfort zone is because I know I'd been this with this one company forever and I knew it was kind of a safe place and this was such a big jump for me and it just totally paid off. Just go on auditions. Just do it. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you so much. Okay. I'm Ashton Marcus with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine and you are? Uh, I'm Joey Nestro and I play Jack. Could I have a bio of you? 
Absolutely. Um, I went to school at Cal State Fullerton for a couple years, and I did some uh, time at Fullerton College, and now I'm just out auditioning uh, all over Orange County, L.A., Riverside. Um, done a couple shows out in uh, Riverside. I just did Lee Miz out there, which is a lot of fun. And, yeah, living the dream. Do you mind me asking how old you are? Yeah, I am going to be 30 in a few months. You actually, uh, you look like you're a high school kid. Oh, thank you so much. I'm gonna, I'm treasuring that youth, man. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's a weird thing being, you know, and it's a nice thing too, I think, when you have a role like Jack, who's a kid, but it's kind of complex and you have to understand so many other levels that I think you kind of need someone a little older to play the younger characters who get, make the choices that you need to make uh, for that character. What do you focus on in this character? I mean, was it, you know, was it the adventure? Was it, was it a, a, a kid? Yeah, I mean, the, the first note that our director gave me was, Jack is a boy. Jack is at the, at the heart of it. Jack is a boy, and a lot of times, you see the show, especially when it's played by someone who's older. Jack kind of comes off a little, a little dim-witted, a little slow, and that's not it at all. He's just he's naive, he's sheltered, but he's a boy. He's excited, he's energetic, and so that's what I tried to focus on was finding finding that youthful exuberance and that lust for life that he doesn't really get until he gets out in the woods and on his own. So, what kind of singing background did you have? Um, I've been singing since as long as I can talk. I, I took choir all through high school. I uh, majored in musical theater, and I've been—I mean, I've been singing forever. It's uh, so much a part of me. I don't know what I would do without it. Right. Yeah, because for a play like this, I just wonder how much uh, of the musical chops you really need to to, to do this. Yeah, uh, especially with song time, because especially a show like this too, where it's mostly sung, you kind of have to have uh, actors. Uh, who are trained. We need trained singers as well as actors. And what's great about this cast is that we have both. Everybody here is a double, if not a triple threat. And it's it's incredible to have someone with you on stage who's going to sing and hit the right notes and be with you vocally and also commit, connect to you on an acting level. And it's just it's easy. At that point, it's easy. Yeah, so seeing as you've been doing this so long, any advice you have for younger actors who want to get into the business? Never give up. Never get discouraged. You're going to have periods where you're cast, you know, back to back to back to back. You're going to have periods where you're not getting anything. You're going to have periods where you're playing the leads, periods where you're ensemble. Every show you do, no matter how big or how small, you're going to learn something. Either to work as an ensemble or to work on a solo song or to, you know, shine in a dance number where you're not focused. It's it's all about learning and, all, and just constantly learning. That's the big thing about acting is you never stop learning. All right, well, thank you very much for being on the show. All right, thank you so much. Hello, I'm Ashton Marcus with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine, and you are? I am Tara Pitt, and I play the baker's wife. Could I have a brief bio of you? Sure. Um, I've been doing theater in uh, Orange County and L.A. counties for oh, a little over 20 years. Um, I played Natalie Portman in Natalie Portman the Musical, uh, Laura in High Fidelity, um, Kathy in the last five years. Uh, let's see, what else? <laughs> I'm trying to go through it in my head, getting the list down. You played yourself in Piano Party. That is true. I played myself in Piano Party. Um, Mary in uh, Merrily We Roll Along. And, um, yeah, so many more that I can't think of right now. <laughs> okay, and can I have a synopsis of your character? Sure. Uh, the baker's wife uh, is there with her husband. They're uh, longing for a child and, and find out that uh, they've had a curse put on them and that they need to go and gather some items to get that curse undone and she's a very uh, independent kind of girl and um, wants to help in any way she can and tries her best even though her husband's very worried for her safety and helping him but she's she wants to do her part and, and be there right with him so did you play it as say a strong woman typical strong woman or maybe vulnerable woman yes I, I, there's there are, there's a lot of vulnerability to her but I feel like uh, she is she has a definite strong independence and she's she's willing to to go with you know go head to head with her husband and and say I'm a part of this too and, and I want to be here to help and and although she will if he tells her you know I want to be able to do this and I want to keep you safe she'll listen to him but there's just something inside her that keeps bringing her back to try to keep helping him every single time so do you consider yourself an actor who can sing or a musician who can act um I would probably say an actor who can sing. Um, I, I mean, I 
To, to me, both of them are, are very strongly rooted um, in me and my upbringing and my past. I come from a, a family of performers, so I identify with both sides very strongly. But um, but the fact that I you know I like to do straight plays as well and things like that, I I, I feel a lot of that really uh, enrooted in me along with the singing. So I would say, yeah, probably actor first. So at what point in your life did you realize I'm an actor? Because again, when you were young, you could easily take piano, voice lessons, and all that. But acting is such a vague thing. When did you know that you were an actor? Um, I think it actually happened to me uh, when I was about 12 years old, um, and I was in a drama class. And uh, because not everyone in the drama class could sing, we were doing uh, lip sync um, performances. And so we all had to prepare something, a lip sync of some sort. And uh, most people were doing it in groups, but I wasn't there on the day when people chose who they were going to be working with. So I ended up having to do a solo so there I was lip syncing by myself and having to just do it and not having anybody to work off with and it was at that point everybody the kids and the teacher afterwards were just I can't believe that you just did that and what and that was the first time because I went growing up I always knew I could sing but I never really thought of myself as an actor and it, I think that was the point that I realized oh I don't have to sing and I can put this message across in the same way and I think that's when it really hit me and that's when I was like yes this is what I want to do well thank you very much for being on the show <laughs> thank you very much yeah Ashton Marcus KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine and you are Brendan Sanchez and you play uh, Cinderella's Prince and the Wolf Good. and could I have a uh, uh, bio of you uh, sure. I was born and raised in Fullerton, California, and uh, I went to Fullerton Community College with a lot of the people from Into the Woods, and then I went to UC Irvine, where I graduated with a BFA in musical theater, and now I'm just kind of doing stuff around here. Yeah. Okay, can I have a synopsis of your characters, too? Um, well, the wolf is the wolf from the Little Road Riding Hood story, and he... You know, leads her astray and then eats her and her grandmother and then is killed very early on in the play. And Cinderella's prince is Cinderella's prince. He just serves that function in the story, being the prince who spends his entire time trying to get her. And then once he gets her, he uh, well, he's sort of a cad, I would say. That's the word I've been using. <laughs> I have always... I've seen this play a few times. I've always seen the wolf and the prince being played by the same guy. Why do you think that? Well, in the original Broadway cast, uh, those two parts were played by the same person. And I think that, first of all, the wolf is such a small role that it um, it helps to you know cut down the number of actors that you need. And also, having the prince play the wolf foreshadows the prince's wandering eye, so to speak. Um, that he's just sort of a... He's driven by hunger and... All these things that aren't the romantic fairy tale ideal, so it sort of is a foreshadowing of of that, having those two actors connected that way. So basically, uh, what did you, what kind of emotions did you put into this? Um, <laughs> it's 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 hard to say sometimes. I when I'm playing the wolf, I just try to be, uh, it, it, I just try to be very happy about getting to eat. I don't try to, th- I try not to think of it as creepy. I'm going to eat a little girl and kill her, and there's a very like there's a lot of sexual undertones to the the whole role so I try not to think about that I try to just be excited that I'm going to do something really innocent because I think that in his eyes it is innocent he's a wolf and that's they eat you know they eat meat and stuff but for the prince um it's it's this like discontent that just never you know there's a hole that's never filled in him and he can't ever be happy with what he has because he just always needs something else he's had everything handed to him so whatever he has is not good enough yeah so uh well thank you very much for being on the show Thank, oh, thank you for coming to see it. And thank sure. you for interviewing me, yeah. I didn't know if you yeah. wanted all of us, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ashton Marcus. Hi, Ashton. And you're... Hi, Ashton. <laughs> and you're? I'm Tanya Thompson. Okay, and you play? I play Cedrilla's stepmother. Oh, great. And uh, could I have a brief bio of you? Of me, Tanya? Oh, gosh. Um, I just graduated from UCI, actually, last year. Zot, zot. Um, I most recently have uh, played Sarah Jane Moore in Assassins at Fullerton College. Um, I was in another show here at the Curtis last February um, called Piano Party 2, which is an original work by the production company who just produced this show. Um, I also just recently started in Les Mis um, out in Performance Riverside. 
Okay, and can I also have a brief synopsis of your character? Sure. Um, gosh, Cinderella's stepmother um, is actually far more complicated than people give her credit for. Um, she's calculating and um, definitely a little touch of evil stepmother in there, but she's definitely misunderstood, especially in this version of the, the classic fairy tale. Um, she is someone who is, is determined to look out for the well-being of her children, um, no matter the cost, no matter the stakes, which I think she later in the show learns, um, you know, like Sondheim so skillfully writes, um, you know, wishes come true, but not free. So, um, but yeah, she's, she's determined to make sure that um, her family ends up in that palace any way possible. I'm always fascinated by people who play villains and <laughs> anti-heroes. What do you think of your character? Do you think of more like a, a Lady Macbeth type character? Oh, gosh. Um, I didn't even think of that, actually. That's a complicated question. Um, I, I don't necessarily. I think that villains are really interesting because... Um, Especially in our culture, we're so, it's very quick for society to label people as bad or good. It's easy for us. We put them in, you know, they're either this way or that way, and it's, it makes it easier for us to understand them. But the really cool part about playing a villain is that, of course, that person doesn't believe that they're evil. No one really truly believes that they are evil. Um, I don't think anyone starts out their day being like, I'm going to see, you know, how much trouble I can get into. Um, so, it's fun to play a villain because you have to find the reasons why someone would be so desperate enough to perform things that could be considered evil and perform acts that could be considered bad um, that go against the norms of society. So um, I think that's why villains are really fascinating. They're super fun to play for sure. <laughs> you did a very good job. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad you got to see the show. Did you enjoy it? Yes, I liked it. Oh, good. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. Oh, no problem. Thank you, Ashton. <laughs> okay, I'm Ashton Marcus with KUCI 88.9 uh, FM, and you are? Sarah Weinzettel. And what do you do here? I'm the music director for the show. I don't work with a Curtis, though. What does that encompass? So as the vocal director, I teach all of the music that is sung to all the performers in the cast, and then through Tech Week, I make sure that everything goes smoothly. Um, if I need to, I edit some of the tracks that we sing to, uh, if they need to be adjusted for timing or for blocking, set changes. Uh, and then once the show is up, I do the, the vocal warm-up at the beginning of every show. And then if there are any things that need to be reviewed throughout the run of the show, then I make sure that those get fixed as well. Okay, are you in part of any of the, uh, the casting? Uh, oh, yeah. There, yeah, definitely casting. I played piano for all the auditions, and then at the callbacks, uh, I'm an integral part of the, the casting process, and I sit, and me and the director stayed up. I think casting night, we stayed up till 4.30 in the morning, making sure that everything was where it needed to be. Okay, so when you look to cast something like this, are you looking for actors who can sing or musicians who can act? Um... Definitely actors first, especially with Sondheim, um, because he writes for actors, he doesn't write for singers. Um, so uh, from the first step of the process and the auditions, that's what we're looking for. And then as we're going through the rehearsals and everything, that's one of the things that I make sure to remind them of constantly. You know, Sometimes they get in their heads a little bit and try and sing too much. Um, so we have to remind them, no, it's an acting show. You need to make sure that you're, you're kind of thinking of them as um, dialogue, just set to music. Mm-hmm. Yes, but this is a lot of singing. A it's a lot. lot. <laughs> Definitely a lot of singing. Um, but Sondheim is interesting. The way that he writes music, he doesn't write a melody and then adjust the lyrics to fit the melody. He writes lyrics first and then mimics the natural inflections of speech in his writing. So a lot of the exercises with the the um, cast that I did was having them speak through their lines um, as if it was just written dialogue. And then we set the music to it. And the, when they sing it, then it becomes significant easier because it feels more natural and follows how they would speak. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Maybe this is just uh, you being modest or something like that, but uh, I would say that there was a lot of music in this mm -hmm. and also that the uh, performers actually performed pretty well as singers. They, yeah, well, the, all of them have singing backgrounds, um, some more so than others, but all of them are trained musicians, um, and several of them have already been in this show before. So uh, through a lot of the process was getting them to get rid of old habits and consider new things and keep it fresh um, in, in that capacity. And then as far as there being a lot of music, we just started early. The, as soon as we cast a show, we had a full weekend of music only, and we sat and we went and had three eight-hour days in a row 
of uh, just going through the score over and over and over and over before the Christmas break so that by the time they came back in January everything was internalized and we could really dig in uh, for acting motivation and, and things like that. Great. Okay. And could I have a brief uh, bio of you? Um, oh gosh, brief. Well, um, I'm I'm not from California. I'm from the South. I got my bachelor's in music education from LSU in Louisiana. Moved out here for grad school at Cal State Fullerton, and I'm almost done with my master's in music history and literature. And I discovered music directing probably about five years ago. And I've been working for a children's theater locally, and then other smaller theaters in the area for all of that time, probably the last five or six years. And this will be this production of Into the Woods is my fifth involvement in Into the Woods, and then I'm also doing two additional Into the Woods productions beginning this upcoming week. So by the end of this spring, I'll have done it seven times, and it's my favorite show. It's uh, it's it's fantastic, and I love that acting is such a big part of it. Um, and yeah, it's just I think that's really my bio. Is I just do this for a living. I teach voice lessons on the side and piano lessons when I can, and it's a crazy, um, unstable kind of lifestyle, but I love it. Okay, um, okay, I should be asking this director, but I'm going to ask you. Mm -hmm. uh, Into the Woods was a Broadway hit, mm -hmm. Tony Award winning, and also movies coming mm -hmm. out. So how do you adjust this production to, to those circumstances? Um, well, we the score that we worked from was from the Broadway revival. So um, we always had our sights more fixed on the Broadway version, not necessarily the movie. The movie was great, and they did some cool visual things. Uh, and, of course, I love what Broadway musicals adapted for film always do for the art form, getting new audiences. And I think opening weekend of the Into the Woods movie got a bigger audience than the entire run of the original Broadway performance. Um, so it's great to spread the word about all of that. And that's kind of what we're going towards is the Broadway production. The movie was great for us for publicity's sake, though, because people who saw the movie, uh, I even I had an interaction with someone who said, "Oh, this movie is great. They should they should make a Broadway musical of this." And it's you know a face palm kind of thing. But um, it, then they drive by and they see, "Oh my gosh, Into the Woods is right there. Let's go see it." So it was free publicity for us, um, and it I think our production showed that it is more. There's more singing in the Broadway than there was in the movie so it demonstrated um, the talent level of our performers and of course not having auto-tune or any film editing to cover up mistakes that live theater is, is great in its own right so I think that um, people who are aware that it's a Broadway musical and a film can really appreciate our performances and uh, I think they enjoy it. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, what kind of advice can you give to, say, young actors who want to get... Actually, you're teaching a, a mm -hmm. young music. What kind of advice can you give to those actors uh, who want to get into the music industry? Um, as far as getting into the, the music industry or musical theater? Musical theater. Industry. Musical theater. Um, always, always make sure that if you open your mouth to sing, there's a reason for it. A lot of people focus way too much on technique only, and I've run into a lot of performers who have never considered that acting is what keeps somebody engaged in what you're doing on stage. And that's why this musical is really important um, for young children to see, is because it's a storytelling musical, and all my students, I always make sure that they're aware you have to communicate something. There has to be a reason for you to open your mouth. Um, and really, if you're connected Connected with what you're saying and what you're trying to convey, the technique follows without much thought, and it, it's very natural. And that's when you have a successful performance when you can communicate with an audience. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I'm Ashley Marcus with KUCI oh, 88.9 88. <laughs> FM in Irvine, and you are? I'm Tina Mittler. I'm the Curtis Theater Manager. Great. Well, could you uh, tell us a little bit about uh, well, what you do and a little bit about the Curtis Theater? Absolutely. Uh, we are actually a civic run space. Uh, we have 199 seats. It's a very intimate house. And what we do is we present a season, a season of life performance, really, uh, to our community. But we also draw regionally. So we draw primarily from the Brea, Fullerton, Placentia, North Orange County area. But we have patrons coming as far away from L.A. and also South County. Uh, we do about uh, 70 performances in our regular season. Uh, uh, which includes a large-scale youth theater program. Uh, we partner with some standout local producers to present tr the traditional theater experience, like Into the Woods tonight, uh, which is what 
that you saw. And then also we work with um, seasoned touring professional guest artists. For example, we just had world class, class jazz pianist David Benoit in, in December, uh, Grammy nominated. So we pre- usually present about a couple of those a year that are one day engagements. I, I was actually impressed by it. This is actually, this is actually a very professional uh, atmosphere. Well, thank you. Um, that's what we do. Uh, even though these actors and performers, they're from the community, uh, they approach it as a profession. It really is their end game. It's their profession. Um, a good core group of performers in the cast, this is what they do. And uh, obviously we have a staff here, and this is what we do. So uh, it's it's not really a hobby. It's, it's basically what we do. Okay, well, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. <laughs> Into the Woods is playing at the Curtis Theater from February 6th to February 21st. For more information, go to www.curtistheater.com or search for A&B Theater on Tumblr.